All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Dr. Angela Loria. How are you doing? Angela? I'm fantastic. It's great to be here. Yeah, and Angela's founded the uh, Author Incubator to help life coaches and other healing professionals write, publish and promote their books. And uh, so you, you really help people not just bring the book out of themselves, but actually be able to write it, publish it and sell it and, and actually make, you know, make it a, a core part of what they do, right? Yeah, I'll give you a little background on this. Mm. I spent uh, 17 years in the software world, VC funded, venture capital funded software companies. And as a content marketer, I was focused on developing books, white papers and webinars to drive leads mm -hmm. for software sales between $5,000 and $100,000. So I was generating two, three, four thousand leads a month by giving away books and related courses mm -hmm. and products. So when I started my business, The Author Incubator, I knew I wanted to work with entrepreneurs who had a message of transfer, transformation, how to make businesses better, how to make leaders mm -hmm. better, how to make families better, and show them this technique that a book can actually be a lead in to get leads. And at the same time, you can use that book and the content in it to nurture those leads and use the credibility you get from the book to convert those leads. Mm -hmm. So it's an all-in-one, no like and trust tool that works really in any industry. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, I haven't been fortunate to publish a couple of books myself. Um, I, I, I understand it. But here's the thing. So when you work with people, a lot of people feel they have a book in them or feel they have an idea in them. But it's let's face it, it's pretty hard to actually get that from a thought or an idea into reality. That takes somebody like you. So how do you how do you help people draw it out of themselves and actually get get to a finished product and beyond? Well, the biggest mistake people make is they are trying to write a book called All the Important Things I Know, mm -hmm. and it usually ends up being about five different books. So the sure. hardest job that I have is really starting with our prospects with what I call frame your outcome. What do we want the result to be? Because we're not going to get a good result from share everything you know. People aren't even going to read it. They're not going to buy it. So getting really clear on the result you want. Do you want more clients for um, a certain program you offer? Do you want to build your list? Are you having, do you have an event strategy? Are you trying to get paid more as a speaker? Depending on what your goal is really changes what book you should write and mm -hmm. how you should write it. So we spend a lot of time on, um, the Stephen Covey quote, he says, when climbing the ladder of success, make sure it's leaned against the right building. Right. If we've got the right building, it's much easier to write a book. Yeah. So, and, and, and on that, uh, and it's interesting what you just said there, um, because about the outcome, because I think most people, when they think about writing a book, they kind of think about one outcome. They think, I'll publish a book and then it'll hopefully it'll sell a lot and, and people will see me maybe as an expert or they'll just appreciate what I'm writing. But there are multiple different outcomes that you can be after. Because let's face it, I mean, there's a lot of books out there, there's a lot of competition and business books in general, you know, they sell a certain level. Yeah, I mean, it's never about book sales for us. Mm -hmm. And most people come to me thinking, I'll have them say something like, I just want another source of passive income. I'm like, yeah. well, yeah. Mm, mm, not so awesome. Yeah. There are, um, when I started in publishing, which was in 1994, there were about 350,000 nonfiction books published per year. Mm -hmm. There are now about 500,000 nonfiction books published per month. Right. And back then when we had, you know, less than a 12th of the number of books published all year, people were going to bookstores and buying books. And yeah. the way we used to shop was a, like by browsing. We would mm -hmm. go to a section, we would look at the spines, pull out books that looked interesting. 
that sort of browsing type of shopping doesn't happen anymore. We now shop by search. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest things I teach people is you have to know what your prospective client would be searching for in a book. Right. If you get those search terms right, the books will get in their hands, which is important. And the people who read the books aren't even the ones who will be your clients. The people mm -hmm. who buy the books and don't read it are much more likely to become a client because they want help. They want to solve this faster than reading a book, trying to read the sources that helped you to write the book. They want you to just come and do it with them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a that's a, a good point to underline there that it, oftentimes the the book is a credentialing tool. It's a calling card. It's a it's something as you say to pique your it pique somebody's interest in the fact that maybe you have something interesting to offer and you can help them as opposed to just being you know a book. Yeah, absolutely. You have to know what not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But what we find is one in 40 of our book buyers want to have a conversation with the author about the possibility of working together. Right. And one in a hundred book buyers will actually buy something from you in the five to $10,000 range. So it's mm -hmm. not everyone. It's a small number. But if you want to hit 100K, you could probably do that with 10 clients. Right. So how do you, how, when you talk to somebody, how do you, how can somebody see if they're actually ready for a process like this? Because as I said, I mean, I, I grew up in Ireland, right? And we used to laugh in Ireland, like if you threw a rock out a window, you'd hit a short story seller or a short story writer. Yeah. Right? Um, and so everybody kind of feels like in many ways feels like they have a book in them. How do you figure out people who really have something of value to say, or have the ability or wherewithal to see it, see the process through yeah what we're looking for are people that have a process and have a solution so they have already have clients doesn't have to be that many two three mm -hmm. four and they've gotten a result from them for for them for their clients so somebody came to them and they had a bunch of people in their team that were fighting they were able to get the team to work more productively somebody came to us and they had a couple come to them that was about to break up. They were able to save their marriage. Somebody came to them and they wanted to lose 10 pounds and they lost 10 pounds. So being able to identify solutions you have already brought to the marketplace, you might not know the exact system. We can help you figure that out. But having a problem that you know how to solve is the number one key factor to using a book for sales. Then coachability is always key because what we'll do is work with you. You will feel like it's very normal. What I do is different with every client. Yeah. I sit down with my client and it depends on what's going on with them and I do something different. We have a process where we can figure out your process sometimes better than you can because you're too close to it. So if you're coachable, um, and then the third thing is if you want to scale. If you're happy taking onesie twosie clients here and there, great, no problem. But if you're trying to get to a steady flow where you have three, four, five, six new clients a month, you're converting them to other offers, that's where we can really help if you want to systemize your business. Yeah, and it's it's interesting that you say that about you know, everybody having you know, saying, "Oh God, I have a very particular process, a very different process that I use." Because I do think people often believe that. I had a great experience a number of years ago um, in a company I was running, and we did a partnership, and there were four companies, and we were all sort of competitors. But we decided as part of this partnership process that we would lay out our engagement processes because you know their propriety and they were very different and we do things very differently and after all four of us laid out our proprietary processes that we did very very differently guess what there wasn't much difference between any i was going to say that they weren't that different <laughs> no they weren't so people often overestimate kind of the difference of what they do. So I guess part of what you have to 100%. do is figure out how to, how to make it a little bit differentiated. 
I think that's part of it. And you know what makes it different is you. Mm -hmm. I think people are so afraid to even let themselves look at their process because they feel like, oh, I really just stole this from someone else. I learned this from my old boss. I like, but they really didn't. We all get information from lots of places. We've all read good to great. You know, we've all read mm -hmm. math. We've read the same books, whatever. That influences us. But we didn't have the same third grade teacher. We didn't right. all spend two years in Uganda while our parents were in the missionary service. We didn't all have a mom who disappeared when she was two. We didn't all get born under the Mars sun and we're not all Aries. Like our personalities are different and that's what we try and bring out with our authors. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants more of you, genuinely you. Mm -hmm. The process is important. It's not gonna be that different than it. One of my first, um, the first step in my process is know your reader. Mm -hmm. Every single person who's ever taught writing in the history of time, that's their first step. I say it slightly different. I say define your ideal reader. I got a little twist and a hook here, but really there's never been a writing coach in the history of time that doesn't say know your audience. Yeah. So, but they don't say it the way I do. They don't say it and swear as much as I swear. Like, they don't, <laughs> like, so it's you, you're the magic formula. And that's what we try and bring out. Number my step number two in my process is identify your voice. And mm -hmm. we spend time on trying to identify what makes you unique. Um, not necessarily right. the process. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting point about your voice, right? Because at the end of the day, you don't want a, a book to come out that doesn't really sound like you sound, that doesn't really represent who you are, right? Yeah, I was a ghostwriter for 17 years, and uh, I love the book. They're right there. That's my shelf <laughs> of books that I wrote. Um, wrote 29 books and I love them. But what I realized is it's really, they're really my books. Right. And the authors of those books never really owned it. Mm -hmm. Never really internalized their own message. They almost had to check with me to see, did I say that? Because they don't know their books that well. So there are a couple of our competitors that are focused on ghostwriting. And I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I was a ghostwriter. I think it's fine. But I really think there's a power to writing your own book. Um, it changes who you are. It's a mm -hmm. transformational process. And then how do you help some people? Because, I mean, when you go through a book writing process, I mean, at some stage, uh, you know, a lot of people go through maybe a little bit of self-doubt or... You know the a imposter saying, yeah, a little bit, a lot, maybe, <laughs> or maybe they even get in, you know, conflicted or afflicted with the imposter syndrome, where they just think, oh my goodness, if I put this out, like I'm not really that good. People aren't. How do you help people over that part? Because sometimes that can come late in the process. Oh my god, it comes at all different times. You know, <laughs> one of my favorite ones. It's so funny. Right at the end, after the book is written, we work together for months. They know that you know they've got our support. They know we're in. And I have them write a bio. It's 50 words and it goes on the back cover. I don't have a book mm -hmm. next to it. It's, it's, it's little something. Has to be 20% of my authors lose their minds writing a bio. They're like, well, I shouldn't have written the book. I should give up. I think I should live in a bungalow in Thailand. <laughs> like they're just like, it's funny what triggers people throughout the whole process. Sometimes it's publication day. Like mm -hmm. I had one girl the morning of publication day, she was thrilled. The book came out, we announced it, the emails went out, she sold a thousand copies, she burst into tears and ran away. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, but so I never know when it's gonna hit people, but this is what I can tell you and your listeners, 100% of people have the moment. Yeah, yeah. 100% of people have a moment where they're like, who, what was I thinking? Who am I to write a book? And like, and here's the, and yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, like, here's the other part because some people will think when well, you're listening to this, like, uh, oh, well, it's probably they're probably afraid of failing and you know, other book collab or whatever. But a lot of the times, um, and I've seen this more and more recently, the thing that holds people back is not so much the fear of failure, but the fear of success. 
Totally. Have you ever heard that quote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful by me beyond measure. Mm. It's exactly. by Marianne Williamson. And she's actually one of our author coaches. So she works mm. with our coaches because fear of success is one of the biggest challenges that we have more, even more than fear of failure, yeah. fear of being seen, fear of success. So we have that spiritual work with Marianne of just saying like, wait, maybe I am good enough. If not me, who? And one of the things I think I've been saying, I have a 14 year old son and I've been saying this to him. One of the weird blessings of the coronavirus pandemic situation is it's really obvious for everyone that no one knows what's going on. Yeah. Adults don't know. So my kid looks at me and he's like, how come I have to wear masks here and I don't have to wear masks here? Or how come I can go to the grocery store but I can't go to school? Or how and my answer to him is because nobody knows what's going on. Yeah. And I've said this to my author so often, they'll write a book about sales or they'll write a book about relationships or they'll write a book about parenting. And then they'll say to me, but I don't have everything figured out. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, here's the newsflash. No one does. You've got a few things figured out. Contribute those. <laughs> we'll take yeah, it. I'm and I think that's a great takeaway as well for people because it is true. And I mean, I think everybody has seen that probably uh, for the first time really laid out in front of you that it doesn't, and it doesn't matter where you sit on the political spectrum or whatever, the no. or the medical or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's nobody has all of the answers. And guess what? A lot of people have very, very few of the answers and, and that's okay too in terms of, but just be, be good with what you do have the answers for. Okay, like so focus on as you say, focus focus on that. There are some things I know. Most things on the planet right now and always, I like don't know. Mm -hmm. And I, I can cook an incredible poached egg, but almost <laughs> everything else I'm terrible at. Like not a good cook. I can like publish a book that generates a quarter of a million dollars, but I'm not very good at a lot of other aspects of business, logistics, project management, email, reading my email seems to be, I want a gold star for. So I think one of the keys to success with our authors and they get a mirror with me is knowing what you do know. It might not be much, but just own that. It, no matter how small it is, own it all the way. And that, and that piece of self-awareness is, is quite incredibly life-changing in itself, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact is, when you realize that you don't know everything, um, and, and your son is 14, mine is, mine is 15, so they have, a f they're, you know, they have a few years to go yet to discover that they don't know everything. Oh, no, yeah, they're pretty sure they know everything. Yeah, My child yeah. knows everything. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's why, I was, that's why I always say is, I'm sorry, I, I'm too old to know everything. Yes. <laughs> I need to use that line too. I always just say, I know you think I'm the stupidest person on earth. <laughs> Got that. It's very clear. <laughs> yeah. But it's great. Uh, and, and it's so good. And I think, and I think more than ever, I think too, people do crave um, authentic insight. So, I mean, I think it's a great time for people um, to work with somebody like you who have, you know, ideas that can really contribute something because I think people are searching for authentic voices with, with, you know, good, solid ideas. Again, like you said, nobody's looking for, um, the book entitled book that will solve every problem that you've ever had and ever likely to have in the future. They just want to have insights that are going to help them in one area, another aspect of their life, business, whatever. A hundred percent. Absolutely. All right. Well, this has been fantastic, Angela. Um, I'm so glad you uh, could join us today. Um, all of Angela's information will be in her bio, um, but you did mention at the beginning what you do. But if you want to just give a quick, up, uh, a quick uh, brief summary again of what you do and the services you offer. Yeah, absolutely. We help entrepreneurs get books that are going to generate clients, revenue, and credibility written quickly and published and out there in the world. Um, my books are free at theauthorincubator.com slash free books. So if you wanna read about it, um, my book, The Difference, will tell you how to write a book and my book, Make Them Beg to Be Your Client, will tell you how we use books to get clients. So would love to help you guys with your books. 
Fantastic. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.